Good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be spending time with you guys in God's presence. And it was fantastic to be hearing everybody's perspective, points of views and experiences during the tap. And I hope, I'm hoping, was that me? I'm hoping that as we go throughout scripture, you will be able to see how our experiences, the way that we think, what we believe, and how we behave has affected how we relate to God, right? I know that we're on a close friendship series, and the theme is really a lot about intimacy. The the theme, yeah, the, the theme is a lot about intimacy, so hopefully we can look at how we can be intimate with God, right? Um, it was quite interesting to see how a lot of us really struggled with the aspect of relating to God as husband. And you know, sometimes my clinical brain goes off and I'm thinking how many people had husbands in the house that displayed the characteristics of God to their wives and to their children. So let's get into the word today. So for... <laughs> So for me, really, when I was preparing for today, I am very much, I have to lay the foundation. Like, what is intimacy, right? So on the first slide, I've got a definition. Let me get my head out of the scripture. Um, Intimacy, it says close, being familiar. Is that me? Is that my clothes? Is it okay? You know, when you want to do fashion, because you know (laughs) A&T are always coming in here looking so beautiful. I was like, I can't let you guys down, <laughs> right? So intimacy with God, in the, in the aspects of God, in the dictionary, it says being close, familiar, or friendship. And I know Ayo has covered a lot around friendship. And one of the examples that the dictionary gives is the intimacy between a husband and a wife right? A lot of the time when we see intimacy or friendship or familiarity, we don't always think husband and wife, do we? But it's really interesting that the dictionary gives us this example. And even throughout the word, just knowing that this is how God looks at us, okay? Ephesians 5, 25 says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So again, I know I looked at the sacrifice that Jesus died on the cross for us so that there could be intimacy with us as children and as believers. Okay, so as we go through the day, as, as we go through this session, hopefully this definition stays with with us that's okay you can go to the next side so again I don't know how many of those are into theology or even how much we're studying our word but throughout the entire bible right the 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 way God describes us is always as a bride even in the old testament when he creates a covenant and we'll look at that he's always been our husband Even in the Old Testament, he says that he was holding their hands as he led them out of Egypt. God has never changed. He's always been that husband. But I think because many of us don't see it in earthly vessels, we find it hard to touch in the spirit. So again, I put here, in order to experience the true intimacy with God, there must be an unveiling. And today that is my message, okay? The unveiling. And the foundational scripture is 2 Corinthians 3, verse 14 to 16. Can everybody see if I stand here? Is this okay? Yeah? Yeah? So, but their minds were blinded, verse 14, but their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns 
to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So I really want you guys to sit with that scripture. I hope you guys are taking notes so that when you go home and you're in your own, your own time, God will reveal his word to you. We see in this verse that intimacy starts in the mind and in the heart of the believer. Okay? Intimacy with God starts in the mind and the heart of the believer. And the reason why it starts with the heart and the mind is because that's what's going to influence our desires, our beliefs, our understanding, our knowledge. We spoke about in prayer, those that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. Some of us are struggling with the exploits because we don't know. So our mind has to be renewed. Our hearts have to be purified. But what is it that is stopping us? That is why I add the question in tap. What's actually stopping us from experiencing the fullness of that intimacy with God? Okay? And we're going to look at some of these veils. Let's see if we can go to a next slide. I've actually got a veil here. And I'm hoping... I prayed over the veil and I said, God, as I put that veil on, you need to reveal to your people the veils in their lives. So what is a veil? It's a thing that serves to cover, conceal, or disguise. A piece of fine material worn by women to protect or conceal their face. A cover, a curtain, something to intercept. Something to intercept the view and lewd an object. I want you to pay very close attention to that word, intercept. Okay? Examples of veils in the Bible. So I put women as an outward display of modesty. So again, if we're talking about intimacy, they will only remove the veil with those who they were close with and their husbands in their house. Moses, when he was talking with God on Mount Sinai, even though he was veiled with the people, when he went up, God was like, remove that. You're talking with me. You're in my presence. Get rid of that. And the last one, we've got the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant, where the veil separated man from the presence of God. Those who know in their word, we've just come out of Easter, that during God's resurrection, that veil was torn. That veil was removed. Okay? So have have a think and have a think about what are some of the veils that may be in our lives. And put it in light of intimacy. So some of us had mentioned that the veil may be fear. Some of us said our veil may be the experiences of being in churches that may not have been representing God in his fullness of his glory. Some of us even said the veil may just be us in the way that we think and what we believe about God. I think that's so important. We've all got veils in our lives. Some of us, multiple. Some of us, multiple. So again, on the next slide, that says, not easy to see. So again, we've all had experience in our lives that would have created a veil over our minds and our hearts. And these veils obscure, and maybe we should say intercept, which is the word that the dictionary uses. These veils intercept how we see God ourselves, the world, and people. How we believe all, and and how we believe all of that sees us. So it's not just one way, right? It doesn't, these veils don't intercept one way. It distorts how the world sees us, how the world interacts with us, 
So again, if we have this veil of fear that stops me from being vulnerable, that stops me from showing up in authentic relationships and friendships, the world is going to be like, I can't mess with her. I can't be intimate with her. Is she even a believer? So the veil works two ways. Not only does it affect how we see, but it also affects how others see us. So let me get this very pretty veil that I found. You know, uh, as a woman, I love weddings. I love, I love attending weddings. I love people going into covenant with one another. I love the, the gorgeous dresses, the beautiful flower girls, and even, you know, some of the men, they may be looking a bit sharp yeah. in their suits. <laughs> right? But I just love the entire ceremony and how beautiful it looks. And for me, one of the things that I found so symbolic every time I attend a wedding is the bride's veil. The bride's veil. And I'll just put the mic down for a moment. It's not new. Yeah. It's not new. And we're going to have a look at some of the examples of veils. Let's have a look at some of the examples of veils in the scripture. So one of these examples, the original veil. Okay? <laughs> the original veil was Adam and Eve. Right? So they had intimacy with God. They walked in the garden with God. But the moment there was an interception by the enemy, there was a mischaracterization of who God really was. And fear and shame now became their veil. They could no longer see God the way that they did. They couldn't even see themselves the way God saw them because of the veil that was covering their minds and their hearts. Please remember the, the scripture that we looked at in 2 Corinthians. We're dealing with the mind and the heart today and how those veils that cover them stops us from having intimacy with God. Another veil that I saw was when Tamar was raped by her brother. So in the scripture, we saw that Tamar was raped by her brother. And after he did such a traumatic thing to her, he discarded her. He was like, go. And Tamar's response, instead of running for her life, finding somebody to support her, she 
begged him not to discard her because she feared the rejection of how people would have seen her after such a traumatic thing has happened. So many of us in life, our experiences have been so traumatic that it has placed a veil over our minds and our hearts that even things that are dysfunctional, we now sit in it for the fear of rejection. In the clinical world, working with a lot of individuals, young women who may have been abused or are even being abused in abusive relationships. But there's such a fear to leave because they fear, how is the world going to see me? They fear being rejected. So sometimes the veils that cover our minds and our hearts are from trauma. And I say these things today because I want us to start identifying where the veils are in our lives. Because I'm hoping by the end of this morning or even this afternoon, we can give those veils to the Lord. Lastly, I've got here, Judas betrayed Jesus, and it changed how he saw Jesus and saw himself. He was overcome with a sense of hopelessness, which became his veil, and ultimately that led him to commit suicide. I don't know how many of us, or, I'm, or should I say, I'm sure there's plenty of us who have betrayed Jesus in one way or the other. Whether that was through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, share me as your friend with this person. Testify of my goodness. God, I can't because I'm scared of what they're going to think of me. So I quench the Holy Spirit and I say no. Betrayal. The word that we're going to look at in the next scripture is where God, he writes the commandments on our hearts and on our minds. So when he's saying to you, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery in your heart, and we go and do it anyway, betrayal. In the wee hours of the morning when God is calling us to come spend some time with me. We ignore him. We ignore the invitation. Let me go watch Netflix. Betrayal. <laughs> the biggest betrayal. I mean, I mean, so including myself. I'm not even going to lie. The way I have betrayed Jesus with Netflix sometimes, I have to go back and repent. Can we go to the next slide, please? So in Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 8, so for me, let me get up the scripture. I'm, I'm really old school, you know, I really prefer to have my Bible, but I know in this day and age, technology, right? So how do we know when a veil is removed? Okay, and we're going to look at this in Isaiah 6 verse 1 to 8. So verse 1 says, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now in Corinthians we saw that the only way the veil can be moved is if we turn to the Lord. So a part of the veil being removed is the proximity. How close are we to God? Because in that closeness, we get revelation. Have you ever 
thought that you knew somebody? Have you ever hung out with them for years? And then one day a story about them breaks out and you're like, what? I didn't know that. Clearly, there was no intimacy in that relationship. Because when there is intimacy, I will reveal things to you about me that nobody else knows. So some of us in our walk with the Lord, we're like, God, but no revelation is coming. It sounds like only when the pastor is preaching or when the leader is facilitating or the elder is talking. It seems like only they're getting revelation. What about me? Come closer. Come closer. I know that that is the call in the spirit for a lot of us in here today. Come closer. The second verse says, woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord, or Lord Almighty. So here we see that the more clearly, so the closer you get, the more clearly you can see. Not only can you see God more clearly, but you can see yourself more clearly. You can see others more clearly, right? Because when we have a veil, it distorts, obstructs, intercepts how we are to truly see our neighbor, how we are to truly see our brothers and sisters, how we are truly supposed to be interacting and in relationship with the one true living God. Woe to me. Self-awareness. Self-awareness. When God writes his commandments on our hearts and the laws in our minds, we create a God conscious which means everything I do, anything I believe, does it line up with that? Does it come from there? I hope you guys are hearing me this afternoon. I think verse three is it on the next slide. So verse three, what am I saying verse three? Point three, but verse seven. Please forgive me. Again, it's Isaiah 6, verse 1 to 8, if anybody is taking notes. It says, with it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. We're talking about removing a veil. The evidence that we know a veil is being removed in order for us to engage in intimacy with God is recognizing that our sins have been atoned for. I gave the example, obviously, of Adam and Eve. When that veil was in place, they didn't recognize who they were. The shame made them hide. How many of us not only hide parts of ourselves from people, but we try to hide parts of ourselves from God. So we will go to prayer and we will give him all the glory. We will enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. But the moment we are to confess, the moment we are to reveal, the moment we are to unveil some of those parts of us that bring us shame, 
we skirt around it. So I'll pray for my sister, I'll pray for my brother, I'll pray for my mom, i pray for my neighbor, even for me, Lord, favor, <laughs> prosperity, I need a new job, I need a car, I need more money. But that thing that you're ashamed of, that part of you that you think God doesn't see, he wants you to bring it to him. I don't know who that's for, but that is definitely for someone in here today. There is a cleansing and a forgiveness that comes with unveiling. Not only can we receive forgiveness, but we can forgive others. So with an unveiling comes cleansing in forgiveness. So as you forgive others, you're being cleansed. As you release and let go of past hurts, experiences, traumas, there is a cleansing there is a washing. And I find it so interesting. I know that's probably a message for another day. But as the bride, we know that the groom is to cleanse us and to wash us so that we are without blemish. Again, if you look at the types and the shadows or the metaphors that are used throughout the word, we are always the bride. We are always the beloved. So in the forgiveness, there is cleansing. Verse 8 says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then the response was, here am I, send me. There's an answer. There's a way that we are to be responding to God when he has called us for a purpose. There's no way that I can do the other parts. There's no way that I can be intimate with God, receive forgiveness, be cleansed, without first knowing who I am. Without answering to the call that is on my life. Again, Io said in the garden, God was looking for Adam. Where are you? If you want intimacy with God, some of you need to answer. <laughs> some of you need to answer. It would be so weird to know your name. And when someone calls it, you do not answer. The only time you don't answer is when you don't know who you are. So again, some of us are running around in life like, my purpose. What is my purpose? In my family, as husband and wife, or as a brother or a sister, as a father, as a leader. Whatever title you may have, what's my purpose? You'll find the answer in intimacy. Because as the veil is removed, again, not only are you going to see who God is, but you will see who he is and who you are to him in his eyes. Mm 
how does God see me? Who am I to him? These are some of the questions that you'll only find the answers in intimacy. There's a scripture that I wanted to have a look at, and I wanted to close in this, in this scripture. If I can find it, Lord, help me. I believe the scripture is, I might have to get my Bible because... You know when God gives you a last minute scripture and you're like, oh Lord, but that wasn't a part of the message. And he's like, it's a part of mine. (laughs) So I believe the scripture is Jeremiah 31. Please forgive me, guys. Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 38. But again, that same scripture is in Romans 8, I believe, verses 10. Because you know when the prophets will prophesy you'll hear the disciples repeating that same prophecy. So, Jeremiah 31. Yes, Lord, thank you. (laughs) Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, sorry, 31, verses 32. It's, It's a new covenant, right? And it says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, in that day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them. But this is the covenant that I will make with those of Israel, After those days, saying, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man to his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall already know me, from the least of them, from the least of them from the least of them oh Jesus hallelujah Lord hallelujah from the least of them to the greatest of them says the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more ANC what I am saying to you today is put away that old way of thinking. Put away that old way of believing who God was. That old covenant, it's gone. It's gone. We have a new covenant which says that we can enter. We can enter. I don't need Io to enter for me. I don't need the priest to enter for me. I don't even need my grandparents to enter for me. I myself can enter and receive forgiveness and atonement for my sin. So again, with my message being the unveiling today, I implore you all, really, let the intimacy with God be a desire. You cannot be intimate only by serving. (laughs) You can't be intimate with God only by serving. (laughs) My sister Susan, I know she told you already. (laughs) Between Mary and Martha, Mary chose intimacy. She chose to be close. Whilst Martha was serving... Mary chose intimacy. Let us choose intimacy today, people. God bless you, and I hope that this message has really helped (laughs) and encouraged you guys in the Lord. Bless you guys.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such a powerful message. Powerful, powerful message. Thank you, Stacey. Um, and we're going to borrow you in a second, but we just, we just, but that's so powerful. And as you know, we are in this series of close friends. And I want us to really lean into what Stacey said, because before we even get to that point where we're drawing close to God, we have to identify the veils. Not as an obstacle for us to be like, okay, this is too messy. But as a way for us to just bring it to him with the trust that he is able to make all things new. All things new. God is not like us. <laughs> He's not. But I believe in this very moment, as Stacy was speaking, there was a drawing. There was a calling to go deeper. With all your mess, with all your brokenness, with all the fuss, with all the doubt, with all the worry, with all of the anxiety, with all the pain, with all the scars, with all the abuse, with all of the dysfunction, God is still saying, come. 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 I know you may not be perfect. I know you may not even get it right tomorrow, but still come. You may fall tomorrow, but come. I'll help you back up. Come. This is a journey I'm doing with you. Come. Just as he called Adam, he said, come, where are you? What we had before, where is that? He's saying it right now, and I just feel God on this so strong. Come. This morning as we were in prayer, pre-prayers, the Lord took me to Revelation 2 about you have forsaken your first love. And, you know, sometimes we I've read that scripture in the past when, you know, as well, church history. It's just like, if you don't come back now, <laughs> you know, there's a fear around coming back. But now when I, when, I, when I read those words, it's a yearning of the Father's heart. Like, return back to your first love. What we shared, what we had. I want you. And something the Lord shared with me years ago was, I love the you now as much as I do the future you. That ought to break shame in the room today. And so as Stacy was speaking, the Lord has led me to release this scripture. And you guys have heard it many times, but I want us to really allow it to sink in, to allow the veils to be released. Psalms 103 from verses 7, it says, He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse you nor remain angry forever. He does not punish you for all of your sins. He does not deal harshly with you as you deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed your sins as far from you as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children. You are his child. Tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows that you are weak. He remembers that you are only dust. This is the heart of the Father drawing you near. And even right now, I just want us to stand as a response. So stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want us to take a moment to respond to God in this moment. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Here I am. Yes, Jesus, we draw near to you right now. We draw near to you, Lord. We draw near to you, Lord. 
Yeah, Holy Spirit, begin to minister to each one of your children in this moment. Begin to minister to them. Yeah, Holy Spirit, pour out your love upon their hearts, Lord. Yeah, Lord, break shame in the room. Break fear in the room, God. Hallelujah. Your word says that you are close to the brokenhearted. Lord, I pray may they experience your closeness even now. Hallelujah. Yeah, just begin to respond to God. I respond. I respond to you, Lord. Yeah, I respond to you, O God. Yes, Lord, even if you're serving in the house, I just want you to put down what you're doing just to respond to the Father. Yeah, Lord, I respond to you right now. I respond. I will respond to you, Lord. I respond to you right now, oh God. Here I am, here I am, oh God, here I am. Oh, I'm more of you, Jesus. Here I am, here I am, oh God. We respond to you right now, oh God. We respond to your yearning. We respond to your heart in this moment. You, you want us, Lord God. You want me, Lord God. You want everything, a broken and a contrite heart you will not despise. You are welcoming our brokenness even now. You are welcoming our pain even now. You are welcoming our, our hurt right now, Lord God. You are welcoming our flaws and imperfections right now. You are welcoming. You are welcoming. He's inviting it. He's inviting you. Ah, yes, oh God, you are inviting us deeper. You are inviting us deeper. Yes, Lord, we are worthy of drawing near to you. We are worthy. Hallelujah. We are worthy, oh God, of drawing near to you. Hallelujah, Lord God. We, we, we present our veils right now, Lord God. We, we, we present the abuse, Lord God. We, we present, Lord God, the trauma, Lord God. We, we present, Lord God, the experiences that have told us that we are not worthy, that have told us that we are not significant, Lord God. We, we come with all of that, Lord God. We come with the baggage, oh God. We, we come with it all, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes, God. Hallelujah, we come with it right now, Lord. Yes, Jesus, we come with the anxiety. We come with it, Lord God. Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. We present it right now, Lord God. Yeah. I just hear the Lord saying, get honest with me. Some of you have been carrying such a weight and a burden. You have been crying alone and feeling as though you are alone. But the Lord is saying, bring it to me today. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Minister Jesus. Even now, some of you are feeling the tug, and I, I, I feel this strong to rededicate your life to the Lord. To rededicate yourself. To choose God in this moment. To choose what he has for you in this moment. The future that he has for you. Hallelujah. And I want to give this space in the room and for you to come forward or you can stay in your seat actually if you want to but 
to rededicate your life to him. You can come forward so we can pray with you. If you desire to rededicate your life to the Lord, if you desire to put a reset on your walk with the Lord, you've been far for some time. Yes, Jesus. And so if you come forward, we will pray for you. Holy Spirit. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we are just praying right now, Lord God, for your children, Lord God. I just hear the Lord saying, rededicate, give me your life again. Give me your heart again. Hallelujah, God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Yeah. Yeah, we thank you, God. Yeah. I believe that there's there's a few other people right now that the Lord is drawing and pulling on to rededicate your life to him, to choose him hallelujah yes lord and father i even i even pray lord jesus over that individual right now those individuals god and i just really pray heavenly father that you lord god may begin to just overwhelm them with your love lord god overwhelm them with your truth oh god overwhelm them with your peace in this moment oh god Lord, I pray, reveal the path that you have for them in this moment, oh God. Reveal the path that you have for them. Lord, your word says that you know the plans that you have for us. They are plans of good and not of evil to bring us to an expected end. Lord, I am speaking right now. Every person that has felt insignificant, that has no purpose, confused, unclear about what their future looks like. Lord, right now I pray that there will be a hope that is raised in the room. That you, Father God, hold the future for their lives in the name of Jesus. That even now, even as they have recommitted themselves oh God that this will be a journey Lord God that leads them to clarity that leads them to freedom that leads them to breakthrough in the name of Jesus hallelujah Lord I pray give them the grace to walk with you give them the grace Lord God to do life with you in the name of Jesus God I pray concern and shame in the room oh God I pray release them with shame, with your love, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, Holy Spirit. Minister to your daughters. Yeah, Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. Sheke da 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 ye seke ya. Sheke da 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 ba seke ya da 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 ba. Sheke da 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 ba seke ya. Holy Spirit. Yeah, Holy Spirit. Speak to your children. Speak to them, Lord God. Yes, Jesus, speak to them. Yeah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even right now, all together as one house, I want us to say this prayer, Lord. I rededicate 
and recommit my life to you. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Today, I choose to yield to your Lordship. Hallelujah. May I grow in the fear of the Lord when it comes to every area of my life. I trust that you love me. I trust that you have a future for me. I trust that you can heal me. I trust with your truth I can be set free. I am free. I am free. I believe that you have more than enough for me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Even right now, I just want you to lift up your hands all over the room and just begin to say, I receive. I receive your love. I receive I am loved. I receive I am worthy. Yes, Jesus. Just begin to receive that truth right now in the room. Yeah, you are worthy. You are worthy. I receive I have purpose. Yes, Jesus.